Welcome to another round of the Twisted Metal Tournament. Stepping up to the plate today is one of my favorite vehicles. An old returning favorite of the series, Roadkill. Badly devastated beater with a driver that no one knows a thing about. So I'll just point out that he's shown wielding a gun here, as are many of the other drivers. Never actually happens in game though. Seems like a scrapped idea to me. The doctors said it was some kind of amnesia. No one could figure out who I was or where I came from. There were some days I wondered if I actually existed at all. All we had to go on were the tattoos. Somehow, they were the key to the person I was. And from the looks of them, you'd think I was a nasty piece of work. I was beginning to think I'd never discover the truth. Then, the truth just kind of waltzes in through my door. Guy's name was Calypso. He ran this contest. He tells me he can clear everything up. I tell him to get lost before I break his freaking neck. But then he shows me this picture. Me, in a suit, all nice and neat, like I was actually someone important. He said there was this whole life just waiting for me. All I had to do was win his contest. How could I refuse? Now I had a chance to get the answers I needed. Let's face it, who wants to spend the rest of their life as a nobody? John Doe is the kind of scumbag who has a tattoo that's somehow halfway between a swastika and the Red Hot Chili Peppers logo. That's going to make it doubly difficult to redeem this guy, but at least he doesn't actively want to kill anybody besides the competition. And we're going to be doing that in a drastically different level from the last few we've seen. The downtown here is quite a bit smaller than the suburbs or the freeway. This brings with it a whole different set of challenges, particularly for a small vehicle like Roadkill here. So I'm gonna arm up and play a mostly reactionary game, at least until a few enemies are down. While I'm waiting to see what they're gonna do, check out this level's environmental attack. Helicopter attack takes a few seconds to kick in, which is very odd. And then one of Calypso's rearming helicopters just, just sort of strafes by. It's usually nobody in particular. Isolated dark side, as we often do at the beginning of these matches. I don't know why. She's just very aggressive. She did get to be the first to taste Roadkill's special. Did maybe a quarter of her health because I didn't quite get to fully charge it. If I had, it would have been closer to half. The bridge went invisible for a second there because it's a destructible object. And destroy it I shall. There it goes. That dumps dark side into the polluted river below, giving us a chance to escape and collect the final of the skill-based pickups, the reticle. Definitely want to try that out, it's an unbelievably powerful attack. I just need to find an ideal situation to use it. Of course, Darkseid's back after us. She's not going to give us any breathing room. The way the reticle works is, once I hit fire, it will begin charging. When I hit fire again, it will unleash the missiles. The longer I wait to do that, the more missiles I get. If I had waited a millisecond longer, it would have done about twice as much damage. The increase in damage is exponential. And right there, my ricochet attack did a little extra damage because it bounced off a wall before it hit Sweet Tooth. There was Roadkill special, which is very, very similar to the reticle. You do have to hold the fire button and then release to fire the missiles. And once again, I did not get a full charge. 
That's because when you have a full charge, you only have about half a second, if that, to unleash it before the weapon backfires and you just waste the whole thing. The reticle can also backfire. It just gives you about twice as much margin of error. Backing up for that turbo. Cause the enemies to catch up to me. Now, normally getting frozen while you're charging an attack causes that attack to be wasted, which is very, very frustrating. But because I broke the froze by getting hit by a dozen other attacks before the charge fully ran out, I did get a second chance. Sweet Tooth somehow spontaneously died. Certainly not going to complain about that. Now listen closely to the weapon charge here. That little jingle right at the very end denotes that the weapon has reached full charge. Then you have the duration of that little jingle to unleash the attack. And if you fail to do so, it backfires. And of course you have to have an enemy in your sights at that moment. So it can be difficult to use, takes some getting used to, but it's very worth it. It's going to even the odds in our favor, despite the fact that there are still six enemies left and we're at very low health. Well, the health crisis is solved. Now to do something about the enemy numbers. The gas can continues to be a great weapon because the bullseye bonus causes it to do just a ton of damage. And you automatically get the bullseye bonus if you are in point blank range with the enemy you're attacking. Because the weapon fires directly into their chassis, doing maximum damage. Now they managed to take me from full health to nearly none very quickly. Got caught in quite a bit of crossfire there. And still haven't taken out the very badly injured Crazy 8 who took the brunt of my damage. Would have tried to pin him down, finish the job. But now I have to make a hasty escape through the level's only secret. This level is based on a Twisted Metal 1 level, and it's very limited in destructibles. However, if we drop down to this precarious shelf, we can collect the Black Cube for the stage. Dark Side, finally down. And we've slain the driver herself. That actually restored some of our health. When you destroy an enemy's vehicle, you can see a little person run out of the wreckage. And forums user Mature Audiences Only pointed out that if you then run that person over, it restores some of your health. So sadism is a very valid tactic for saving your own life. Clearly it didn't save my life back there, but I assure you it will in the future. Now, unfortunately, this feature is not available in the PAL version of the game because they censored out the little person who runs out of the wreckage. Which means you can't run him over. Yet another way that the PAL version is drastically inferior to the original. We got badly sandwiched between two very dangerous vehicles there. Taking one of them down and vaporizing his corpse might be enough to get me away. No such luck. We got one life left, but three hopefully badly battered opponents. Yeah, it looks like it, although Axel is such a pain. His special covers a huge radius and he always seems to have one available anytime he's around. There's R&D chemicals there. They are responsible for turning the water in the aqueduct green. We're just gonna enjoy the relaxing music while we prepare another reticle to hopefully save the day. Yep, one hit kill on Spectre, and it wasn't even fully charged. Just need to tie up one last loose end real quick, and claim victory. 
Freeze frame on John Doe, attempting to kill and devour yet another driver. Clearly these smaller levels go by short and sweet, whether or not you're victorious. Fortunately, we have been. But all things come with a cost. So, let's find out what John's thinking right now. I must have been out for hours. At first there was just darkness. But then I started to see things. Bad things. I remember now. I ran with this gang. At first, we were small time. Random beatings, robbery. We were nobodies. So we came up with a plan. The bomb was choice. Freaking huge. When that building came down, who knew what kind of viruses and diseases would spread across the world? It was glorious. Instant extinction. Finally, for the first time, we were important. We were feared. And that's it. The memories end there. I don't think I like the man I'm turning out to be. Yeah, it can be pretty difficult to like a terrorist who's also heavily implied to be a white supremacist. But surely there's more to this story? Perhaps Calypso can tell John whether or not he's pure evil. I'd won the contest. Now it was time for the truth. I went to see Calypso. Hopefully he would know who I was. He did. Jesus! I was FBI! I'd been deep undercover for the last year trying to bust a doomsday cult in Midtown. Calypso said I was a hero. That night I rushed back into the building. I had to get that bomb as far away as I could, but there just wasn't time. So I took the quick way out. The explosion knocked me out. Now I remember, I am a hero. A hero undercover agent standing in front of number two on the FBI's 10 most wanted list. In other words, a dead man. Calypso thanked me for being such a great contestant. Then he said goodbye. I remember now. I have a family. God, I was just starting to remember. Alas, our nameless hero is anything but pure evil, and in the eyes of Calypso, that's a huge mistake. One does have to wonder why Calypso didn't simply shoot him back at the asylum, but it is said that the omnipotent work in mysterious ways. Let's just hope the champion of the next round can appease him with bloodshed besides their own. <laughs> 